So if you've been here for all of approximately two seconds, you will have heard me talk about the A plot and the B plot in the sound team. Today I'm going to run you through what both of those things are a little more, as well as our most common mic issues that we face during a show and what we do to fix them. When I say that there is someone here to monitor the show, what I mean literally is that there is someone who is paid, it is their entire job, to listen to microphones while people are wearing them. This is not something that is talked about a lot. The intention of this is to preserve people's privacy and to make sure that no one feels uncomfortable. But in my opinion, all it does by not telling the performers really what is going on is it stops them from being allowed to make their own boundaries about their own privacy. When you are introduced to monitoring and it is something that you start to do for a job, it is stressed to you to the absolute world's end that you are to maintain people's privacy at all costs that what you may hear on the microphone is entirely confidential and that there is really no need for you to be listening to people's conversations. We monitor the show to make sure that all microphones hit stage working, that there are no issues that hit the stage, that you are not embarrassed in your performance, having to continue to perform through when you can hear that something is wrong or God forbid the show has to stop so that we can fix your microphone mid your performance. A lot of the things that we are listening for, we can listen to and recognize through background noise. Personally, when I am monitoring I like to do a really good check of the ensemble during large ensemble numbers when everyone is on stage singing together usually because this is also the time when any issues might happen or occur but also because it's a great opportunity to listen to their mics without any chance of them really having conversations that they wouldn't want to be heard by me. As well as this I check people's microphones one or two songs before they are about to go on for a large number just so I know that if there is an issue I can identify it let the A plot know and it can be fixed before they hit stage. The first one is people's tape coming off. That one is the most common and the easiest to fix. If someone's tape comes off, we just replace their tape. The person on deck will be floating around and you can find them and ask for tape. If you cannot find them, head over to the person monitoring and they will be able to help you out. Tape is there to stop the microphone from getting caught on things, getting pulled on, from looking ugly, and also to stop the mic position from moving, which is my second most common issue. Mic positions can shift for a number of reasons. There are a lot of shows where people have to move their mic position depending on their costume, for example, Mary Poppins people move their mic positions all of the time because they are moving in and out of hats which requires them to stick their mic onto the brim of the hat instead of just on their forehead because it sounds kind of like garbage if it's under the hat. If a microphone slips under a wig or a hat that is called being hatted and that sounds really muffled and terrible and that is not what we want for you to sound like on stage. Other than that if a mic has slipped back or slipped forward the person on B plot will be able to tell based on the volume of what's going on around you or the volume of your voice in particular whether it is in the wrong position and they will let the A plot know, the A plot will approach you and change it back to the position it's meant to be in for that particular moment. If you are someone wearing a boom microphone and you have a beard or if you are wearing a wig that sheds a little bit or your hair is particularly sheddy, you might find that you get a hair in the microphone. A hair in a mic is like this low popping sound that happens kind of like over and over again. It's very distinct. It's also very jarring. It's a very ugly noise and we can pretty much clock it straight away because you can see it in the waveform a lot of the time as well as hear it on the mic. The mic itself has a capsule under the grill and then a grill that goes on top to protect it. This grill is where the hair will get caught. So to fix that we use a little bit of tape and we tap it onto the top of the grill which hopefully will then catch the hair and pull it out of the grill. The grill is also where our second last issue occurs and this is a sweat out. Because of the consistency and the saltiness of sweat it can get stuck in the grill that surrounds the capsule on the microphone. It's like the sound that you hear when you go underwater, completely submerged in both of your ears. How we fix this is by getting a tissue and rubbing it onto the grill to absorb the sweat out of it. Another way that we help prevent this is by using water stop, like the literal spray that you put on like leather shoes and stuff to protect them from water. We put that onto a cotton bud and we rub that around the microphone before you even put it on, which will then hopefully repel the sweat away from it. Something that you can do as a performer wearing a microphone, if you're a particularly sweaty performer, and you've just come off after a large number or you know that you are getting quite warm and damp is you can flick 
your microphone. You can flick the whole thing and it will dislodge any sweat. That really helps us out because it means that we don't have to worry about you sweating out as much and that you are also helping to maintain your microphone. Please be gentle. Do not get carried away. If your grill comes off for any chance, which it shouldn't because you should be being very gentle, come and find us and we will replace it or try and find it so that we can put it back on. The final issue is a connection issue. The microphones lock and twist into the transmitter in a way that means that if they are not tightened as much as they can be, you can hear it. The connection itself will make noise if it's wriggling around or if it's not in there properly. If we've tightened your connection, wiggle it around and that is not where the noise is coming from and it is still present, the chances are that there may be a break along your mic somewhere, which we then check usually around the mic itself or around the connection. If that is the case, we will throw a new mic onto you. So I guess that is a bonus little mic tip from a break. If you want to know anything else about any kind of mic issues, please let me know any of the less common ones that we face or any that are specific to certain shows. Make sure you check out my mic maintenance video to have a look at what we do to keep the mics ready to go and clean. If you check out my night at the theater videos as well, you will be able to see us waterproofing and checking the connections of microphones before they go on to cast members. Please make sure you follow my Instagram so that you can see when next week's video goes live and I will see you then. Thank you.